Welcome to Stuff and Whiskey. I'm Josh. And I'm Aaron. And today's head to head was between Elijah Craig Barrel Proof and Larceny Barrel Proof. One of us gets blown away, the other gets their feelings hurt. Welcome to the channel, bringing real world content to the real world whiskey consumer. Our head-to-head -head matchups are always completely blind. We don't know what we're drinking, but you do. I think of interesting matchups from our collection here in the house, pour those into paired sample jars. They then get labeled and enter entered into our blind sample pool. And then those are mixed up by Aaron, completely selected at random here. We have 18 different pairings and we will run the randomizer to see which pairing we're gonna be drinking today. We won't have a clue what it is, but right. we're gonna tell you Let's what we think about find it. Find out. Five. five. One, two, three, four, five. There we Dead go. Center. So we're going to pour these up and we'll be right back with our first impressions of glass one. All right. So for our first impressions of glass one, uh, they happened what we thought was on camera, <laughs> but the camera turned off on us. So yep. it turns out these things need batteries and memory cards and all that unnecessary fussy stuff. So what were your first impressions on glass one okay. when you took a sip? I wish we could have got the reaction on, on camera. Because it was a never before seen moment where I literally couldn't breathe. Like I, um, <laughs> yeah. I smelled it. We thought it was, it was like moderate proof, but not too high on yeah. the nose. And I, and then it turned out to be very high proof on it the palate. <laughs> burns like and it burns and it's stuck like right here. Yeah. So it was I had to like put my glass down and take a drink of water. So yeah, that was fun. So and it, it really surprised me as well. Yeah. Like I'm getting a lot of fruity sweetness on the nose, a lot of apple, a lot of banana, which I don't smell that just like, a, yeah, just like a really fruity sweetness. I was thinking it was moderate proof, but on the palate. Wow. I mean, it, it took my breath away as well. Yeah. It's, it's packing quite a punch. It still packs a punch, wow. but now that I know to expect that, yeah. it wasn't as like shocking to my body. Yeah, it's still it's still pretty. It's still hitting hard. So it's, it's still kind of burned right here. Yeah, it does. Yeah, hard right here. Like it's I hard in the chest. I don't know if I like that. <laughs> gonna... Spoiler alert: Aaron may not score this one very well. <laughs> yeah, it's got a lot going on. I'm even getting some cinnamon now on the finish. It's just, it's, it's that's a big pour. Yeah. And it doesn't smell it on the nose. I'm really no, surprised. No, it doesn't smell Ooh, as... I got it that time. Singe some nose hair, so I'm oh, sure. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, it smells wow. pretty astringent. Yeah, when you, when you smell something and you think it's not going to really pack that much of a wallop and then it hits you like it, <laughs> oh, that gosh. did, it's, it's very jarring. So, yeah. We're gonna have to take a little bit more time with this one for sure. But for now, let's move on and do our first impressions on glass two. Okay. Ooh. Wow. It smells like straw. I can see that. I'm getting kind of like a, an apple-y sweetness on this one as well. You've been getting apple-y all day. Yeah, I mean, these are, I'm assuming these are both bourbons. They smell like bourbons to me. Mm -hmm. The majority of our pool is bourbons because I'm more of a bourbon guy yeah. and I do the, the alcohol buying in the house here. <laughs> so we have a lot of bourbons. We yeah. have Sunrise, a lot of bourbons. Those are what make up our blind tasting pool. This is, these smell very similar to me actually. Oh, this drink's a lot easier though. Yeah. Yeah. It almost seems bland compared to what yeah, I just had. It and does. I want to try it like on its own. That's really surprising. I wish yeah. we would have tried this first because this is so yeah. strong at anything compared to that. <laughs> yeah. Oh. This glass two tastes almost watered down yeah. when you're going back to back. Yeah. It That may not be the case yeah. when we take some time to AB compare these mm -hmm. two, clear our palates in between. Yeah. and really take some time to pick apart the glass as best we can. But coming from glass one into glass two, this tastes watery. It does, and that's not, yeah, wow. The flake, the nose smells, they smell very similar on the nose to me. 
very similar on the nose. They both have like a fruity sweetness, apple, banana. Mm, I don't get that. I get a little bit no, of sugar. No fruity smell on glass too. I get more of a straw smell. Yeah. And then on this, I get astringency and maybe some fruitiness at the back end. So they smell completely different to me. Yeah, it's so when you're doing head-to-head -head comparisons like this and you got something that's so high proof and then something that seemingly is not so high proof, it, you, you really have to take some time to find the nuances because it's easy yeah. to pick one or the other. And, if, and it's fine if you just pick on a gut level reaction of saying, I really prefer this one because it's not so high proof, it drinks easier, or I really prefer this one because it is so high proof and it has so much more flavor that, that hits you right in the face. But, mm -hmm. you know, we're going to take some time. We're going to A-B compare these, clear yeah. our palates out in between and do our scoring. We'll be right back with that after this. So our scoring system is a common sense system based on thumbs up. So one thumb equals one point, two thumbs equals two points. Just okay is worth half a point. Thumbs down, no points for that. So we rate across five categories. The tasting categories are the nose, flavor, and experience. And that's the tasting score. Later on, after we find out what these pours are, we'll give them a retail score based on the price and availability. That's the retail side of the equation. And then as consumers, would we buy it again or not? That's our consumer score. So before we find out what these are, we're gonna give you our tasting score so that you get our most unbiased opinion possible. Yep. So nose, flavor, experience. Aaron, where are you at on the powerhouse that is glass one? <laughs> glass one is not my type. I'm just going to say that right now. I gave glass one a 0 0.5. <laughs> not even a full point. Brutal. I, it was not, I was not feeling it. It's not your cup of not tea. Not my cup of tea cup or of my cup of whiskey. I gave it a uh, just okay on nose and thumbs down on flavor and thumbs down on experience. That was the most painful experience I've ever had drinking whiskey at all. Ever. And some, some, wow. <laughs> Ever. saying something so and she she will go at a barrel proof no problem it's yeah. not her preference but she handles those just fine i will say glass one for me i gave it a six two thumbs wow. up on the nose two thumbs up on the flavor two thumbs up on the experience now look here this needs to come with a warning sign yeah i think that's what it was for me <laughs> yeah i had no clue what i was getting into and i had i been prepped I think I would have come into it. It's like going into like a scary movie. You have to know that it's going to be scary. Otherwise you'll be terrified. And you, that's kind yeah. of how this was for me. Glass one, you need a seatbelt and a helmet. Yeah. To deal with what's going on uh -huh. in glass one. Yeah. It is a it is a sucker punch. The nose smells similar to the flavors on the palate, but you just have no idea the proof that you're about to be smacked over the head with. Yeah, I mean, this smells very similar to some of the other ones we've tried in previous head-to-heads where it's a, a higher proof, but you can Sorry. still drink it pretty easily, but it, it smells, smells so good. It smells good. So let's do our okay. tasting scores for just... glass two, and then we'll get back to our notes. So okay. we're kind of like, <laughs> Glass one has us both shook, yeah. but it has Aaron shook in the negative way and it has me shook in, in the, the positive, positive way. way. So let's do our tasting scores for glass two, then okay. we'll compare notes. So glass two, where are you at for tasting scores? Okay. So glass two, I gave it a 1.5. Not very Ouch. high. It, I gave it just okay on nose, just okay on flavor, and just okay on experience because I've had other bourbons that I would prefer over this. Yeah. This was good, especially compared to the first one, but... I've had, I would rather drink other ones that we've tried before. Yeah. So I actually came very close to giving glass two the same score of a 1.5 okay. with a just okay in all the categories. But the more I went back to it and particularly after clearing out my palate with some water, taking some time and then starting with glass two first, then I got a lot more nuance that way. Mm. And so I gave it a three. Okay. I gave it thumbs up on the nose, thumbs up on the flavor, thumbs up on the experience. Almost was leaning toward just okay, but I do think it is better than that Yeah. compared to some of, some of the things that we have and some of the things I've tried. So I don't, I wasn't going to mark it down too much. It's also up against like this matchup is fascinating. Yeah. I don't, I don't know what we would have put into our pool that is this different. Yeah. Well, let's find but, out. But we're going to find out yeah. before we do that. Do you have any additional notes on these two pours? I have quite a bit because 
I spent some time with these and, and picked out yeah. some notes that I think I think help. I'm just shook all over from <laughs> yeah. this first one. I'm still like gathering myself. Yeah. And I did say like, don't judge a book by its cover when you're drinking whiskey because this definitely smells a lot less strong than it is. Yeah. And that that is a lesson I have learned today. Yeah. So for glass one, I got rich caramel on the nose, lots of fruity sweetness, like a red apple sweetness. Uh, on the palate, I wrote swelling flavor and lingering cinnamon because when you drink it, the sweetness hits you up front and then that spice just rolls in and it just- I wouldn't know. It, it comes through like a freight train. It had a long and strong finish. It, it, it goes for a long time. So it was an experience in the glass for sure. I really like that. For glass two, I said that it was fruity sweet on the nose. It almost smells like juicy fruit gum hmm. to me. That that kind of banana-y sweetness that juicy fruit gum has to it. That's what I got on the nose with glass two. On the palate, I got green apple and grains, just like kind of a grainy taste like you were saying, mm -hmm. and some green apple sweetness, more of like that Granny Smith brightness. Yeah. And then it has a long, surprisingly long finish for the light proof that it is, or seems to be. You get a long- So you're guessing this is a lighter proof? I'm guessing, Yeah. I'm guessing. And this is probably not. Oh no. So yeah, I was really surprised at how long the finish went on glass too for as approachable and easy drinking as it is. Mm -hmm. Usually if you have something that is that approachable and, and light on the palate, it doesn't last that long. Mm -hmm. So of all the categories that I was really firm as a thumbs up, it was actually on the experience because it, it did go for quite a while. There's no secret here. Your favorite glass of the two was, was glass two. Yeah, of but the But you two, didn't really love either one. I would, didn't really love either one. I definitely did not like that one. So I loved glass one and it was by far my favorite. Yeah. Glass two is just fine. We're gonna check our sample jars against our okay. our key. I'm very curious, although it probably won't mean anything to me. So glass one is 16 and glass two is 17. Glass one is Elijah Craig barrel proof C920. Yeah. What does that mean? That's the batch number that okay. it is. 132.8 proof. $70. The glass two is Larceny Barrel Proof C920, 122.4 proof, $50. Whoa. Have I what had Elijah Craig before? I don't know if you've had either one of these before. I don't feel like I have. What was Larceny? What was the proof on this? 122.4. What was the proof on Elijah 132. Craig? 132.8. Wow. So not totally This different. is not low proof. No, it's not. This is not moderate proof. This is 122 proof. That's pretty proof. It does not drink like that. It drinks way lower than that. Well, and I wonder if it's because we've it, we were comparing it to this. I don't think so because I cleared out my palate with water. I took some time. This drinks way lower than 122. Mm. I would have put this in the 10 range. Really? Yeah. This is fascinating. So this is a really interesting matchup. These are both from the Heaven Hill Distillery. C920 for both batches indicates that it's the the third batch of the year okay. from the year 2020, last year. Okay. This is a typical bourbon mash bill or recipe, which has rye as the secondary grain, corn is the first grain, 51% or more corn, and then the secondary grain is rye. Larceny is their weeded offering, so 51% okay. corn or more. Instead of rye being the secondary grain where you get that spice, you're getting wheat as the secondary grain. Is that the straw that I kind of? Yeah, so people kind of say weeded bourbons can kind of have a funk to them or like this kind of like strawy kind of grainy note. Mm -hmm. So you picked up on that mm -hmm. and I did as well, but it also tends to make them a little softer on the palate. Mm -hmm. I've had this Elijah Craig batch several times. It is a bomb of flavor. Like it, it's an explosion. It's a bomb of it's, something. It's a freight train. I'm, I'm, you know what? I'm speechless. Let's, I'm let's speechless. just move on to our scoring. Let's just get into the, <laughs> let's get into the retail okay. and consumer scoring. So price wise, uh, Elijah Craig barrel proof. 70. Is 60 to $70 in most markets. I think I paid $70 for this mm -hmm. bottle. Uh, Larceny barrel proof is about 50 or $60 in most markets. So 
as far as availability goes, these are limited release batches. Okay. Uh, in our particular market in Nashville, Larceny is harder to come by than Elijah Craig. There, a lot of people say these are really good barrel proof offerings from Heaven Hill and that you find them, like once they hit your market, you'll find them on shelves. These don't really hit shelves in our market here in Nashville. If you shop at a store regularly, they may hold one back for you. Or, or something like that. There may be some type of like a low key hookup situation. Mm -hmm. They're not so abundant that they sit on the shelves. So I would say availability in most markets is gonna be somewhat comparable, if not skewed slightly more limited towards the Larceny. Okay. Price wise, the Larceny is a little cheaper, mm -hmm. you know, 70 versus 50. So take that into account for your scoring. So price and availability for retail score. <laughs> and then whether you would buy it again or not for consumer score, Aaron, this is going to be brutal. This where is... are you at on Elijah Craig barrel proof? Dude. Okay. Thumbs down on retail <laughs> score. Well, okay. Okay. No, you know what? I'm being harsh. <laughs> I would give it just okay on retail score. Did it, did it hurt you? It hurt my feelings. Can you point to where it hurt you? It hurt me here. <laughs> it still hurts right here. Can I have the rest of yours? You absolutely can. Thank you. Do you have any more of that? I'll take that. Sure. Okay. Yeah. Let's do a little tradesies here. Right. Oh I'll put this gosh. in the glass so, too. Spot. <laughs> okay. So let's start over. I'm being really, really mean because it hurt my feelings. I'm going to give it just okay on retail score <laughs> because the price is okay. It's just okay. And the availability is just okay. But would I buy it again? Heck to the no. So <laughs> zero on that. That's fair. So. <laughs> For Elijah Craig barrel proof, for the price for a barrel proof offering from Heaven Hill, such a such a historic distillery, and availability in our market, like I said, it's not plentiful. So I would I would almost want to give it two thumbs up if it were easier to get your hands on. But it, it honestly in our market is not. So I can only give it one thumbs up on that. So availability is hampering it, but the price is great for my in my opinion. As to whether I would buy it again or not for consumer score. I'm I almost want to say two thumbs up. Really? Almost. Yeah. It's such a Do I get like wife veto power on this? No. Oh. Not if it's my fun money. That's true. But if it's if if I can get my hands on this, I'm trying to think. I want to say either thumbs up or two thumbs up. My, my kind of my determining factor in that is if you told me that this is this good and it's gonna be discontinued, which C920 is, it's only a limited release and I could go back and buy another bottle or two, would I do it? I would. And to me, that's a two thumbs up. So wow, that's two thumbs up for me. We vastly differ on we, our opinions. We do. <laughs> well, glass one didn't hurt my feelings. That's true. Glass one took me for a wild ride and I liked it. Yeah. I don't like getting my feelings hurt. <laughs> glass two on retail and consumer scores. Where are you at? Um, you know, it, I'm going to give it just okay on retail score. There are other $50 bottles that I would probably purchase before this one. Therefore, I will also give it a just okay on consumer score. It wasn't bad. I, I, and I don't know if I'm taking out my anger on glass one, on glass two. This might be like residual scoring here. She's feeling bitter tonight. <laughs> I, that really, I did not. Mm. So yeah. So just okay. I'm done. That's fair. Go on. For glass two, Larceny Barrel Proof. I'm going to give it just okay on the retail score. I actually think the price for a barrel strength weeded bourbon is really good at 50 bucks, okay. but the availability in our market is even more limited than the Elijah Craig barrel proof. Mm -hmm. So for me, that's what's hampering it so much. As far as whether I buy it again or not, flavor wise, it's not really doing very much for me Yeah, and it's fine. But like I said, I, I almost gave it a just okay in some categories. So I'm going to say for consumer score, whether I'd buy it again or not, it's just okay. Like I could, yeah. I could take it or leave it. And that's what just okay is for yeah. me. It's like, if I ran out of that bottle and I could buy another one, would I? Maybe. <sighs> Maybe. Yeah. That's kind of how I feel. I mean, is there anything else I can buy? Rare breed. Oh, well, Okay, so then maybe I should give it a no, I won't give it a thumbs down. It's it's a just okay, yeah. but I would I would absolutely buy rare breed that's, over that. That's but the thought that came yeah. to my mind. I was like the rare breed is the same price yeah. and I would buy that over this. Yeah. Personally. All right, so for real world score with taste taken into consideration alongside retail and consumer scores, Aaron, where are you at for glass one 
the beloved Elijah Craig barrel proof. Oh, Elijah Craig. Oh, Elijah. You hurt me. <laughs> you get a one. <laughs> Ouch. I uh, gave it just okay on the retail score, half a point. Thumbs down on consumer score, no points. You add that to my 0.5. So 0.5 plus 0.5 is one out of 10. Yikes. I gave <laughs> Elijah Craig Barrel Proof on real world score a nine oh out of 10. Of course. I gave it thumbs up on the retail score for price and availability, two thumbs up on consumer score as to whether I would buy it again or not. And then with my tasting score of a perfect six, it got nine out of 10. All right. Glass two, where are you at for real world score? All right, so for glass two, I gave it just okay on retail score, just okay on consumer score. So you add that to my 1.5 from the tasting total. <laughs> it gets a 2.5 out of 10. She's mad. So <laughs> this is not a very good day for me. Yeah. <laughs> or these whiskeys. Yeah. I'm. You would be happy if neither of these were. I'd be fine if we didn't have these in our yeah. home. So for real world score on glass two, I gave it just okay on retail score because the availability is so limited in our market. Yeah. Just okay on consumer score because I could honestly take it or leave it. Add that to my three points from the tasting score and it gets a four out of 10 for me. So nine out of 10, four out of 10. For you, one um, out of 10. 2.5. And 2.5 out of 10. Ouch. Yeah. I would say what have we learned here, but I think uh, this is like Aaron is a woman scorned right now. Yeah, and she don't is, cross me, buddy. Yeah, she is not having it. I'm going to be on my P's and Q's, <laughs> tiptoeing around this place for the rest of the oh, night whatever. for putting her through this. <laughs> this is fa this is a fascinating matchup, yeah, though. Yeah, it I is. Mean, it truly is. You've got you've got two pours here that are are really heavily esteemed in the bourbon community. If you like high proof, Elijah Craig Barrel Proof is kind of a must buy if you can get your hands on it. And you just have to know what you're getting into before you get into it. Yeah. You've, you've got to get ready you've to get slapped. You've got to set expectations yeah. like that. And that's the thing is like, this isn't, if I were to pour this in a glass and we both go into it knowing it's Elijah Craig Barrel Proof, then our expectations are set. Yeah. And then we can, your, your mind can almost trick you into saying like, oh, everybody loves this. Like mm -hmm. I, I'm supposed to love it too. But if you taste it completely blind, the only thing you have to go on is what's in the glass. So you're only going on your own personal preferences. Mm -hmm. And to you, it was not to your preference. Correct. To me, it was very much to my preference. Mm -hmm. That's really what it should be about because you should buy what you like, not, yeah. not buy what everyone else likes and then talk yourself into liking it too. Yeah. That's why we do this blind. And then that's also why we go in after the fact and factor in these consumer metrics because there's a lot more to taste than talking yourself into liking a bottle just because you think you're supposed to. Yeah, true. And I say that as somebody who is really prone to doing that. I'm really prone to mm -hmm. knowing that something is really highly received in the community mm -hmm. and feeling like I should like it. And then when I don't like it, almost trying to talk myself into liking yeah. it, probably to justify the money I spent on it. Maybe, perhaps. But at the end of the day, you know, this we get down to the nitty gritty with these double blinds. Yeah. So if you like this double blind format, you can check us out on Patreon. Yeah. We've got our score sheets on there for certain tiers. You get access to all of our all of our information that we use to score these glasses mm -hmm. and how we go about doing it. Yep. You can even sign up for tiers that have blind tasting kits for you. Mm -hmm. You get the sample jars, these little guys, eight of them. You get you get completely hooked up with everything you need to do to do these types of blind tastings in your home, either by yourself or with friends and family. And it's, I mean, we it's have a ton of fun, fun doing this. I if that didn't to, show through on the camera. I have to say, even though I did not like these drinks, I had a lot of fun with you. There you go. So, That's what it's all about. It's Sharing pours, even if they violate you. <laughs> <laughs> even if they hurt you really badly. Yeah. So that's it for that, Aaron. Hit us with the outro. Okay, well, if you liked today's video better than I did, <laughs> please hit that like button. Uh, I will not be hitting the like button, but you should. And then also, if you want to keep seeing content like this, Double Blinds, we do weekly podcasts, hit that subscribe button and you can keep seeing us from now until you don't. There you go, guys. Yeah. Until next week. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs>